Welcome to this online certification course on machinery fault diagnostics and signal processing which is coming from the mechanical engineering department of IIT Kharagpur. Well, uh, those of you who would have seen the introductory video on this course would have got a feel of what this course is about. Uh, this is basically how do we monitor the health of a machine. A very easy way to relate yourself to this course is you become machine doctors instead of human doctors. Okay? So, uh, what do we need to become this uh, so called doctors? Okay? Uh, that is what we will be covering in this uh, uh, 30 hour lecture, uh, which is uh, being covered in 12 weeks, and every week we will have about uh, two and a half hours of lecture, every lecture being of an half an hour segment. Thus, we will have about 60 lectures in all on this online certification course on machinery fault diagnostics and uh, signal processing. Uh, well, uh, briefly to tell you, we will be covering all aspects of uh, maintenance principles and then we will be talking about how maintenance is done, in particular condition based maintenance and then what are the requirements or prerequisites required by an engineer to conduct machinery condition monitoring, in particular instrumentation, signal processing, techniques like vibration monitoring, motor current signature analysis, thermography, wear debris analysis, NDT, NDT techniques and so on. Well, if I go to the week by week schedule of this course, we will have an uh, introduction. Uh, this is this introductory class about half an hour where I will be going over what we are going to cover in this 60 lectures and uh, what are the principles of maintenance available to us in the industry and which maintenance techniques to be chosen when will be studied by a method which industrial engineers use which is known as a FEMICA failure mode effect and criticality analysis. Okay. So, because through FEMICA we can understand which is the best maintenance technique to be used in, in uh, machinery fault diagnostics. Well, then we will come over certain definitions of uh, used in fault diagnostics like what is a fault, what is detection, what is isolation and what is prognostics. Basically, once we are maintaining a machine, everybody in the industry would like to know how long this machine at its present condition is going to last and that is what is covered by what is known as the prognostics. So, prognostics is an important area where we find out the remaining useful life or which is known as RUL of a machinery or a component. Okay. And uh, this is what uh, we will we'll be explaining into what how prognostics is done certain mathematical modeling is used to do prognostics. Uh, though in this course we will be not dwelling much on the prognostics, but for just to introduce you to briefly to machine learning for condition based maintenance. How can machine learning help you make a foolproof system as to how the fault can be detected, diagnosed and even the RUL predicted and there are a lot of techniques available today in the market which do such uh, uh, machine uh, data analytics and uh, for doing the fault diagnostics and then the prognostics. And of course, you know, so this gives you an overview in the week one, we will give you an overview of what maintenance is and then how, how we can use FEMICA to do which kind of maintenance and then we will see what uh, 
diagnostics means in terms of the definitions and what is prognostics and briefly how machine learning can be used for CBM. Now we will move over to the next slide. So in the week two, uh, we will be talking about machinery vibration. This becomes a prerequisite because as you will see, machines when they undergo defects, they will vibrate, they will manifest themselves with vibrations. So an understanding of the basic concepts of vibration would help us understand the because 70 percent of the maintenance done throughout the world is basically vibration based and that is what the survey and statistics indicate. So we are going to excuse me talk about vibration. By the way, the prerequisite for this course is any undergraduate in the senior year to postgraduates. They and many of them in the engineering colleges had maybe already have a course on vibration. So, this is going to help you and there are many standard textbooks on machinery vibration. So, if you browse through some of the popular books on machinery vibration and studied at least the first order system or the second order system, you will be pretty comfortable in this course. And then we will talk about free and forced response of systems and briefly about vibration and shock isolation because this deals with the machine, machine foundation okay, design because you would see many machines in the industry have to be grouted to the ground through a proper foundation and otherwise if the foundation is not proper either they could be exciting through the structural energy being generated in them to a neighboring machine or a neighboring machine could be affecting the performance of such a machine. I will give you an example. For example, we have a tool room where we are doing precision measuring measurements and then we have a forging shop next to this tool room. So, you can imagine each time the forging hammer comes down, the vibration waves underground is going to come and uh, influence the measurements being done in the coordinate measuring machines. So, a proper vibration isolation is required and that is taken care by having good foundation. Another area which we need to cover is rotodynamics because every machine if you think of will have actually a rotating shaft supported on bearings. And then this could be carrying a rotor which could be rotating. So, the influence of the bearing stiffness, the influence of the load or because of this uh, pulley, gear, etcetera, on this rotating shaft will have an influence and what is the critical speed of this shaft. So, these are issues one needs to know beforehand because you know we need not, we must not have the condition of resonance, the effect of uh, bearing stiffness. So, all these are accounts one has to take care of. And this we will be covering in the areas of rotodynamics, which is a very critical part, particularly in rotating machines. And you will see mostly all the machines where CBM is done have rotating machines in them. Okay? And towards the end of this second week, we will be covering about the some practical examples of vibration, particularly relating to CBM. Uh, a machine, once it is uh, under operation and there are some defects in them, it is going to vibrate. So, this machine is going to give out a signal. If I have a machine, and if I put a transducer, I am going to get some signal and this signal in the time domain will look like this something, some signal. So, we need to analyze the signal both in the time domain and also in the frequency domain and sometimes this, the nature of this 
signal is not definite for example a transient could happen and then it will there's a lull and then the transient is happened so this will be a type of non stationary signal which needs to be analyzed and there are different manifestations of the signals whether signals are getting modulated signals are beating if two frequencies of machines are very close by they will have a beating and something related to the rotations orbit and order analysis the basics of signal processing will be covered in week 3 but as i was telling you who does this analysis it is either this computer or a trained analyst okay so this kind of data needs to be taken into the computer by what is known as the data acquisition and it's very important aspect which will be covered what are the effects ill effects of data acquisition what are the limits of data acquisition what are the errors which can creep in in your data acquisition system will be covered here and then of course nowadays people are talking about wireless data acquisition in the sense it is always very difficult to have you know, cables running all the way from the machine to your control room like say for example in a mining plant in a windmill so there are candidates where we can do wireless data acquisition sometimes it may not be possible for us to do any analysis at site so we need to analyze the signal right uh, after recording it in a media so that we can bring it back to the lab for analysis and certain areas of special techniques of signal septum analysis particularly used in gears which means to remove the side bands and then particular approaches of Hilbert transform which are used in envelope analysis will be covered in this lectures. In the next other uh, week five, we will be covering aspects of uh, MATLAB. MATLAB is a very popular tool, which is a software which is used by many students and those of you who are from engineering schools and colleges, I'm sure are familiar with MATLAB. Okay, so we will be introducing you to a programming language called MATLAB, which we'll be extensively using for processing the signals which we obtain in machines and of course you know I'll I'll talk about certain programs and how to do it and then we'll have some numericals on signal processing which would have covered in week 4 and 5 and then few examples of how through signal heterodyning we can find out the for the case of high frequency signals where signal acquisition by a data acquisition system is not convenient how by signal heterodyning we can find out the signals of unknown signals, uh, sorry, frequency of unknown signals, and then show you some practical signals from machines for we, where we need to do CBM. And uh, towards the middle of the course, we'll be having an idea on uh, instrumentation. I'll give you an overview of instrumentation, and then how this signal conditioning and filtering is done. Errors in measurement is very important because you know all my analysis regarding the machine's health depends on the data. If my data or signal is wrongly acquired and so my interpretation is going to be wrong and that is what we need to avoid and that is what I will tell you how certain obvious errors can be reduced. <coughs> then we will talk about the dynamic range and frequency response of transducers and then give you a list of transducers for different techniques of CBM which are used uh, in machinery health monitoring. And in on week 7 we will be particularly talking about basically this is nothing but essentially noise and vibration 
measure transducers and measurements. As I was telling you right in the beginning, 70 percent of the CBM is done through vibration monitoring. So, we will be focusing on this and a very important aspect in machinery condition monitoring is the CBM as the rotational speed. So, how do I measure the rotational speed for from CBM is what we want to focus on this class. And then uh, week 8 will be mostly focused on the faults in rotating machines. And then we will talk about uh, certain obvious faults like unbalance and then of course, how do you do balancing misalignment cracked and looseness which basically happen in all rotating shafts and shafts are an integral part of machine. By the way, I must tell you when you think of a machine there are many common elements like a shaft like bearing like maybe gears etcetera. So, they are similar to you know similar to organs of human being. So, like a, a medical doctor diagnosis faults or defects or the illness in a particular organ of a human being, we will also be finding out techniques to find out faults in the so called organs of or elements of the machines like shafts, bearings, gears, pulleys and so on. And this is what is going to be focusing on week 8 of our lecture. So, in week second, in week 9, I will be focusing on few more machine components and that is uh, bearings, both journal bearings, gears, pumps and engines. And then we will conclude with the machinery diagnostic chart, wherein every characteristics of the faults in the frequency analysis will be related to the uh, uh, to the faults and this diagnostic chart is going to help you diagnose the fault. Now, I will move to the next week that is week 10. Uh, there is another new technique principles of motor current signature analysis. In fact, we at uh, IIT Kharagpur uh, have been uh, a pioneer in uh, using this technique of motor current signature analysis to find out faults in machines being driven by electrical motors. So, there is a mechanical machine like a pump, like a blower, like a gearbox which is run by an electrical motor. We can indirectly measure the quality of this motor current and then find out what is the fault in the mechanical machine being driven and this is a very powerful technique and in fact, we have a patent in this technique as well. For that matter that for the any rotating machine we can find out the fault in that machine if I put a taco generator and understand the ripple voltage is generated in the taco generator we can find out the fault. And then we will talk about different faults in electrical machines be it motors, be it transformers and so on. And so, actually today about 10 percent of the industry use MCSA which was uh, almost uh, insignificant about a uh, couple of decades ago. And then we have the other techniques of thermography, wear debris analysis, oil analysis which we will be covering. And usually you know, this also constitute the remaining 20 percent, 15 to 20 percent. Okay. A thermal through thermal imaging and in the last week we are in week 11 we are going to talk about some of the 
techniques which are other techniques like which are popularly known as the NDT techniques, non-destructive test techniques. And today many of the quality control aspects of a product are checked through these in particular like a weld effect, uh, how good is your welding done, how good is your machining done, okay? how good is your, uh, uh, whether there is a corrosion, whether there is some phenomena, where if uh, particularly if things are stationary, these things are very helpful. When I talked about uh, vibration monitoring, when I talked about uh, motor current signature analysis, we always had an idea that the machine was running. But in some of these techniques like ultrasonic radiography, eddy current, etc., the machine can be stationary. And usually again, you know, 5 to 10 percent of the industry use NDT as a means to find out defects. And then I will give you an example of TC, tool condition monitoring, where we have used the con concept of sensor fusion uh, through a project which we have done about a couple of decades before, ago. And then another technique I will tell you about EMA, wherein we find out the resonance of any machine, because when a machine is operating, we would not like to have a condition of resonance occurring, so that the machine will undergo a uh, defect, because at resonance, for uh, the amplitudes increase and then uh, repeated resonances will under, uh, the machine will undergo fatigue and there will be a premature failure. So, this needs to be avoided if we can estimate the resonant frequency. Uh, the last week we will be covering on failure analysis because no matter how best we do CBM, failures do occur and failure analysis is something like a post bottom. So, we can find out the cause of the failure and this helps us in better design, better selection of materials. And then I will give you an overview of some through a case studies on uh, northern vibration mounting of a railway locomotive which we did at IIT Kharagpur. And then uh, case studies from a paper mill vibration monitoring and towards the end to give an uh, overview of the condition based maintenance facilities we have at IIT Kharagpur in our acoustics and condition monitoring laboratory. And then of course, you know what is the future of condition based maintenance will be discussed in this uh, last class that will be on my 60th half hour lecture. Okay. Now, this 12 week course, uh, there will be about 10 assignments, uh, I think every week there will be an assignment. The modalities will be let, uh, known to you through the web and uh, we will have an uh, end of the semester examination. And of course, uh, I am available in terms of uh, any input you need. And of course, uh, the details are, you know, I have a book on machinery condition monitoring, okay, which is available on Amazon or, or any other sites uh, through CRC Press. And we will be following this book for uh, the course and many information regarding the activities we will find at this website iitnoise.com. And I will be periodically putting up a lot of information at this site for in terms of uh, papers, uh, help notes and programs so that you can access that for uh, your learning. And of course, you are always welcome to contact me either by phone or email for any queries you may have. So, uh, we will uh, look forward to having um, interacting with you and we have a fruitful uh, study on this course on machinery for diagnostics and signal processing. So, in the subsequent classes, I will uh, go into the details of what the different techniques are. Well, uh, thank you and this is the cover page of my book on machinery condition monitoring, which we will be using as a text in this course.
Thank you.